Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, helping you earn more, spend less, and invest the difference. Now, if you watched my last video, you know I'm a big fan of index fund investing. It's passive, it's easy, and you don't need to know a single thing about the stock market. And in the long run, you're probably going to make more money with index funds than you are trying to pick individual winning stocks. And you might say, well, that's great and all, I'll just do index funds, but which index funds should you buy? I mean, there's hundreds of different index funds. Now, at this point, I have to throw out the standard disclaimer of I'm not a financial advisor. I can't give financial advice, do your own research, all that kind of good stuff. But these are my favorite index funds, and this is what I look for when I'm picking an index fund. Now, when I'm picking an index fund, I usually look at two main things. And the first one is, what does this index attempt to cover? What types of funds are held within this index fund? There's all kinds of it, different index funds. Some track the big companies like the S&P 500, which is going to be the 500 largest companies in America. Or you might have other index funds that target the little guys, the smaller upstart companies. Or you might have targeted sector-specific index funds, maybe something like technology, retail, real estate, healthcare, airlines. So whatever it is that you're interested in investing in, chances are there's an index fund that already tracks that particular style of investing for you. So I like to stay a little bit diversified, so I like to have a little bit of everything. So in this video, I'm gonna give a couple of different picks in a few of my favorite sectors. And the second thing to keep an eye out for when you're investing in index funds is what is the expense ratio? Now, all of these funds have somebody that's putting them together, it's managing it. Even though it's passively managed, there is still work to be done to create and maintain these index funds. So there are fees involved, but thankfully these fees are oftentimes ridiculously low. And when I say they're ridiculously low, I mean they are often significantly under 1% annually. And this can be a big deal because let's look at two different side-by-side -side comparisons of some index funds that attempt to track the global market. This is going to be an international index fund. We're going to look at two of them side-by-side. -side. So first off, we have the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. And this index fund has an expense ratio of 0.07%. So seven basis points annually. That's pretty cheap. Vanguard is historically known as being some of the cheapest index funds on the market. Now let's take another look at a different index fund. So let's take another example of a global index fund, the Spider S&P 500 Global Dividend ETF. This fund attempts to track more or less the exact same thing. It's going to be a lot of international companies. But this one has an expense ratio of roughly seven times as much. This one is going to be half a percent annually or 50 basis points. And over the long run, even though it's only half a percent in fees that you're paying annually, that half a percent can add up to a lot of money. So hypothetically, let's say that you invest $10,000 into this ETF and you let it sit for the next 40 years and you get a 10% rate of return. Now, if there were no fees involved, your money would grow from 10000 to over 450000 But because you're paying a half a percent annually in fees, that means over the lifetime, that 40-year time span, you would have spent $75,000 in fees. Ouch. But had you invested in the Vanguard version, which is more or less the same thing, just a lot lower fees, at that seven basis points, you would have only paid about $11,000 in fees, a saving of roughly $64,000 over a 40-year lifetime. So the first stock that I'll mention is going to be stocks that attempt to track the S&P 500, which is going to be the 500 largest companies in America. So this is going to be the big boys, Apple and Google and Microsoft and all of those. Now, regardless of how much each of these individual stocks cost, it really doesn't matter because a lot of brokerage accounts like Robinhood or M1 Finance allow for fractional shares. So you can start investing in any of these index funds that I mentioned for as little as $1. So don't worry too much about the price per share. Now, if you're looking to invest in large companies in the United States, the S&P 500 is the 500 largest companies in the States. And so an index fund that I like that tracks this is going to be Vanguard stock ticker VOO. 
VOO currently pays about a 1.13% dividend, and it has a rock bottom expense ratio of only 0.03% annually, so only three basis points. Vanguard is historically known as being some of the cheapest index funds on the planet. But what if you don't want to invest in only the largest 500 companies? What if you want to invest in some of the smaller and mid-level companies as well? Well, in that case, I recommend Fidelity's stock ticker FZ Rocks. This index fund is completely unique. It's the first of its kind. It offers a completely free, that's right, zero expense ratio. Fidelity is actually losing money by operating this account. But they're hoping that you like this account and so that you buy other products with Fidelity. So this one, they're just trying to get you in the door and get you hooked. But they are actually losing money by operating this account. Now, FZ Rocks has a lot more companies in it. It has roughly 2,500 different companies inside of it. So owning this stock, you are going to be well diversified. But what if you don't want to invest in only American companies? What if you want to broaden your horizons and invest in global companies from all over the world? Well, in that case, I would refer you back to one we've already talked about, the Vanguard Total World Stock, which is going to be stock ticker VT. As far as global index funds go, this one has the lowest expense ratio that I was able to find at only seven basis points. And it returns about 1.38% annually in dividends. Now, speaking of dividends, what's a great index fund if you're primarily looking for high dividends? Maybe you're a little bit older and you're looking for that nice, steady, recurring income that you can passively live off of. Well, now this one's going to be a little bit of a touchy subject because... Some index funds offer ridiculously high dividends, but more often than not, the ones that pay super high dividends are investing in companies that over time are going down in value. So while your dividend is very high, the overall value of your stock portfolio is slowly going down. You've got to stay balanced even though you're going for these high dividends. And to illustrate this point, let's take a look at the Global X Super Dividend ETF. Now, this index fund offers an insane 11% dividend annually. But if you look at it from a historical price standpoint, it's lost roughly half of its total value in the last 10 years or so. So the stock price started out over $25, and now it's worth only about $13. So over time, the value of this fund is decreasing, even though it's paying out insane dividends. It just can't keep up. So in this case, I recommend the iShares Core High Dividend ETF, stock ticker HDV. This fund offers roughly a 3.18% dividend ratio, which and I don't know about you, but give or take I don't want to invest as much as purely for dividends, you know, knowing that in the long run, about, the actual the value of the portfolio the is going down. As far as expense way to ratios invest go, this run. expense ratio is super low at 0.08% annually, or only eight basis points. What if you're not interested in playing the stock market? What if you want to get into some bonds? Now, when it comes to investing in bonds, I always prefer to invest in inflation-protected bonds, which basically means that these bonds will continue to go up in value with inflation. So you don't have to worry about hyperinflation, maybe due to the national debt or something like that. So when it comes to investing in bonds, I prefer Vanguard stock ticker VTIP. This is going to be Vanguard short-term inflated protected securities, and it pays out a dividend of roughly 2.3% annually. Now, when it comes to individual sectors, maybe textile or retail or consumer products or anything like that, I tend to stay away from those as a general rule of thumb. I know some index funds like Jets, which is all of the different airline companies all over the world. Those became super popular right after coronavirus kicked off when it just wiped out all of the travel. And so the stock prices on the airline companies plummeted and a lot of people jumped into the airline industry ETFs hoping for a quick rebound. But personally, I don't like to play those type of games as far as trying to see which individual sector is going to outperform at any one given time. I think that kind of goes back to the individual stock picking where it just makes it hard to pick individual winners and losers. Obviously, coronavirus is taking significantly longer to pass than a lot of investors were hoping for, and it's going to take years for those airlines to recover. But there is one sector that, generally speaking, I like, 
and that's going to be technology because let's face it guys technology is the way of the future more and more and more of our daily lives revolves around technology so personally i don't think that you can go wrong with investing in tech now when it comes to investing in tech index funds vanguard usually comes to mind because of vanguard's super low fees but their version of the technology index fund is a little bit weird because what they classify as technology doesn't really encompass what me and you might necessarily think of technology as. For example, Google, of all places, is not in their index fund, and neither is Facebook. I mean, Google is a web browser, it's YouTube, it's artificial intelligence, it's self-driving cars. Google has a lot of different stuff going for it. So I don't see how you can not classify Google as a tech company. So for that reason, I personally like the iShares index fund. So this is going to be the iShares Evolve U.S. Technology Index Fund, stock ticker IETC. Now, with these companies, these companies are attempting to grow much larger, so they don't really pay out all that much as far as dividends. The dividends on this one is only half a percent annually, and it does have an expense ratio of 18 basis points. But when you think about technology, these are the companies that you think about in this iShares fund as opposed to possibly the Vanguard index fund. So realistically, guys, if you just picked these index funds or at least a couple of these index funds in various ratios and only invested in those and nothing else, you're probably going to do all right in the long run, financially speaking. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below, give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and as always, I'll see you all again next time. Thanks.